be able to see the recording at a later date. There will be an opportunity for you all um, to do Q&A. So as we go through the, the, the presentations, we will have an opportunity to do Q&A at the end. Um, uh, so as the presentations are as we're going through those, please do add your, your questions within the Q&A tab at the top of the at the top of the bar of the of, of the screen, as you'll see. The chat has been disabled, so you won't be able to enter in anything into that. So please uh, add your Q&A into it and it'll be moderated. We'll we'll pick out uh, questions at, at the end. Um, but we do actually uh, encourage that if there's any particular questions that you like that somebody has posed, please do like it because that will obviously then help us generate themes as to which questions to to pick up. Um, if we don't get to your question, uh, don't worry, we will answer that offline and obviously the, all of that will get added to the, the shared materials. That leads me on to any the materials and the recordings will be uploaded. Um, afterwards to the website uh, and also as we go through this presentation links to references and resources will be shared uh, um, in the comments section actually at the end of the session. So that's the, the housekeeping uh, bit uh, to, to, uh, to mention. So basically the session is going to run with myself just doing a, a quick intro really around the, the well-led will then be followed by Gordon, who said will cover the strategic piece around well-led, providing, you know, certainly his perspective from a regional CNIO and also providing some of the national uh, perspective. Um, obviously, after Gordon's presentation, we'll then take uh, the, the questions, as I've mentioned, and we've got five minutes for that. Following Gordon's presentation, we'll then go into Professor Cheryl and, and Jackie's presentation, and they're covering their recent Big Bang launch they had of their new electronic patient record, EPIC, which was covering 10 sites. It's, it's one of the biggest that's the rollouts that's happened actually in Europe. So they're giving a very insightful presentation around that, lots of fabulous detail, uh, and particularly honing in again on the, the well-led uh, aspects for it. Once they've done their presentation, again, we'll have an opportunity to do the Q&A and we've got 10 minutes for, for that. Um, at the end of, that, of the, their presentation, the Q&A, I'll then do a sum up um, and obviously then a look forward. So that's how it's going to run, everybody. So without further ado, then I'm just going to give a quick overview on the what good looks like uh, for nursing uh, guidance. So for uh, we'll post the, the links in, in the, uh, as I said, uh, uh, for you as we go through. But in essence, if you haven't already seen the, the guidance, there's seven domains uh, which cover off the well-led, ensure smart foundations, safe practice, support nurses, empower people, improve care and healthy populations. And obviously we've got a webinar dedicated to each of those domains, the first being uh, the well-led. But for me, I think you know it's really important that the guidance is is crucial, I think, around digital transformation for nursing because it illustrates the exemplar practice and what what the sunny uplands looks like. And for me, as a particularly as a, as a chief nurse, and I'm sure any fellow chief nurses that are on on this call as well, you don't know what you don't know. That probably applies actually to some CNIOs as well. So having something that really gives you the information you need, provides a handrail as to what what good looks like, what does an exemplar piece look like and and it enables you to take the steps of uh, reaching that uh, and ultimately the piece here is that people read the guidance, do a self-assessment from from the guidance from their own organisations and then that forms an action plan of where you need to get to and helps inform the discussions that you might need to have at board or in fact with 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 your teams. So the well led piece of of this is which is why we're here today is I think is 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 pivotal around around this guidance because it sets the tone. It sets the strategy and it sets the culture for success. So you'll see there on the slide, uh, which is displayed in the guidance, actually, what the what is expected, I suppose, from a well led uh, with regards to the guidance and um, and what good looks like. Um, but for me, this really centres around the nurse leader, which which might be a, a chief nurse. Working incredibly hand in hand with their digital lead, their, their CNIO, 
Uh, and the expectation is that every organisation will have a CNIO appointed or a digital leader appointed. And Ruth May made that uh, that commitment back in March, obviously, when we launched the um, uh, the, the guidance at the, the Digital Nursing uh, Summit. And that, that is clearly articulated within the guidance that there should be that digital leader uh, appointed. But for me, it's about having a shared vision. It's about the multidisciplinary approach. It's about working as teams together. It's about being effective and inclusive. And you know what? Leadership drives all of that. And it's about having a real understanding around what digital transformation is in nursing uh, and how we can enact that uh, and implement it. So today is to bring you some real life examples, I suppose. People are living and breathing this uh, and hopefully you'll get a lot out of it uh, and, and we'll make some notes, which again will supplement what you already understand around the guidance. Um, we also have some support pieces that that, sub, that uh, supplement the guidance too, and you might some of you might be aware of those around the snippets that were published once the guidance was went live. Um, and also, there's been some educational pieces done for chief nurses as well uh, around this. So lots of lots of great stuff. There's lots of references. As again, we'll we will post that uh, for you. So I think that's enough for me. I'm very excited about this 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 webinar. As I said, it's the first uh, of the series, so we're kicking off on a strong note, doing well led. Um, but I'm now going to hand you over to to Gordon for his presentation. So Gordon, over to you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and thank you very much, Andrea. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and it's great to see so many people on the call. Um, as I've already said, or as Andrea's already said, I am Gordon Elder. I'm the regional CNIO for the North East in Yorkshire, and I'm also an associate director of nursing and CNIO for Newcastle Hospitals. I've been in the regional role for around 18 months now, and it's been a massive steep learning curve. And from today, I'd like to tell you a bit about my experience in relation to well led and about um, how we've taken things forward for what good looks like what we've done well and to learn from some of the things that um, I haven't done so well and that we need to work on and continue to take forward. So next slide, please. So it's probably useful for me to tell you a little bit about me. Um, as you tell, I, I'm actually based in Newcastle, but I'm not a Geordie. I'm actually from Belfast. Um, and I've been in this region for quite some time after working in London and Belfast before that, but I've been involved in digital for quite a long time. Like many other CNIOs around the country and digital nursing leads, it's not a career that I chose. It's not a career that I went into to think, oh, I'm going to be a CNIO one day. It's something that just happened. And that's one of the things that's really good because it um, allows us to give a very diverse range of people with of nurses with really good clinical experience. But also the, the con or the downside to that is because we don't have good digital nursing structures everywhere across the country yet. But we're working on that and I'll tell you a little bit about that shortly. My background is working in clinical. I have a transplant and cardiothoracics. But one of the biggest digital projects I've done was introducing Paperlite, which is the, in, uh, the introduction of our full EPR in Newcastle, which is one of the largest trusts in the country. And that was a fantastic experience. I also was the director of nursing for the uh, Nightingale Hospital Northeast, which was the only fully digital Nightingale in the country. And I've also worked extensively on the Great North Care record, which shares all of our patient records across over 400 GPs, 11 acute trusts, our ambulance services, social care and our mental health trusts. And that was a fantastic project. And I, I led the um, the IG work stream and also the nurse lead for it. It's been a fantastic experience for that. I've also been involved in lots of other regional projects. And after Adam Nightingale was asked to come into the region to start looking at what good looks like and to look at the regional CNIO role. Next slide, please. So there's a lot of information about digital nursing and where it was going. And 
a lot of these are still really relevant today. And the Topol report, um, every nurse and e-nurse from the RCN, really interesting reads and things that I was aware of. But one of the biggest steps we made forward in relation to um, digital nursing and how we're taking it forward was the appointment of Dr. Natasha Phillips, who is our national CNIO. And she began to start her national team and then began to approach regions to see if we can get a, a regional digital nurse lead as well. And hence, that's where this role came from. There's been a lot of work done in relation to what is the future strategy for nursing? And there's still so much more that we have to do. Next slide, please. Out of that work came the core CNIO principles that Natasha and the team came up with. And looking at how nurses are involved at all stages of digital strategy, digital implementation, planning and budgets. So joining up care and looking at the Great North Care Record is one example. We've got the Yorkshire Care Record, we've got shared care records in London and at various other places around the country. How do we make sure that our patients are kept safe by joining up our care and the information that we do that we pass on for each stage of that patient's pathway? How do we empower the front line? One of the things that I hear a lot, um, and it is one of the personal things that I try to get out as much as possible. A lot of nurses believe that to be a digital nurse, you need to be able to take a laptop apart and put it back together again. You need to understand what a SQL database is and how to build one, which of course is not true at all. What we need is nurses with strong clinical skills and experience and bringing that into the digital environment because the primary role of any digital nurse is patient safety. Professionalism in nursing and informatics, how are we taking that forward and how are we getting data back to nurses to allow them to make decisions on the outcomes for their patients? A massive plus for reducing documentation burden and we still have some way to go with that. Even with EPRs, we still need to look at how we're going to reduce our nursing documentation. How do we free up time to care? How do we get nurses involved into handheld devices where they can enter data quickly and observe and review data really rapidly so they can spend more time with our patients. Of course, improve safety and use lots of data to target and uh, for support of decision making. Really, really important. And I think in nursing, we're still not there yet. We're still a long way to go. But most importantly, empower people. How do we empower our patients to give them the information they require to help look after their own um, health how did the long term condition management, remote monitoring and various things. So how do we empower people to make sure that we get them, keep them well and look at our population health? Next slide, please. So, of course, because we're in the NHS, um, nothing sort of as straightforward as it looks. At the moment in the region, I look at the national, I work very closely with the national CNIO team which links very closely into the regional senior nursing team and the regional digital transformation team. And that works really well because I get to know what's going on. And from a well-led point of view and how we take things forward, understanding what cogs are out there, how they all integrate and work together is really important. But there's lots of things that go on within a regional and local, regional and national point of view and key relationships with the four ICBs in the northeast in Yorkshire, the national teams that are looking after digital process, the acute trusts are really keen to take digital forward, primary care and how we're looking at our current problems in relation to waiting times and waiting lists. And of course, the re other regional teams that are sitting in and around looking at digital and Digital plays a big element in a lot of what we do. Next slide, please. Just alluding to what Andrea said at the beginning, there are seven areas for in relation to what good looks like and well led is just one. All of this, these must link together to form what good looks like and take us forward. But for today, we're going to look at specifically at well led. Next slide, please. And there's. Oh, Back one slide, please. No, oh, so there's a that's all right. Um, so next slide. So what we did was we looked at we took a survey of digital nurses across the country 
and we asked what were where are the digital leads within those um, organizations. The important thing was that we started to do our homework and learn what did digital nursing look like in England? What did what was a, who was available? What roles did they have? And we found many different things. The first thing we found was the evidence of emerging population of digital health leaders. So we seen that there were definitely nurse leaders, different titles, different roles, but actually there was definitely an emerging community of digital nurse leaders across the country. We did, however, see there was a massive variation in banding from band seven to band nine, and were these leaders set within their organisation? So there was a variation around accountability and reporting lines, some reporting to nursing teams, some reporting to IT teams, and some reporting to different teams like business or even within the estates department. There was a number of job descriptions and there was lots of things that were um, where specialisms vary and the transformation was parts of a full time role for some people, but only a part time role for other people where they would be doing other things as part of their portfolio. And the scope of influence for leadership was. Um, really eye opening to see that some organisations where the CNO had very, very strong influence in relation to the nursing strategy, but in some organisations they did not. So there was a lot of things that we learned from our survey and our strategy to take us forward. Next slide, please. So the big questions that come out of that in relation to how we took well led forwards, how we define the role of the CNIO, how do we align the national guidance and rules and responsibilities of the CNIO and looking at the discrepancies in experience and what should a digital nursing team look like? So in some areas there was really good uh, evidence to show that there was good strong structured teams and that there was a progression through a digital pathway for nurses who wanted to go up the career ladder in relation to digital but in other places there was not. And how do we influence beyond our role as digital health leaders? So these were the biggest questions that come out of this survey. Next slide, please. So where did we start? Because this role was new. Um, as a regional CMIO, I was one of the first in the country, uh, followed by Sarah Newcomb in London uh, very, very quickly. So we were sort of, there was no handbook. Nobody said, oh, here you go, Gordon, away you go knock yourself out and go and do this. This is what you have to do. So I had to learn and I had to look at and how do we answer the big questions? And wanted to, one of the things that I wanted to do was establish what good looks like for the nursing in the digital age and identify leadership and framework. And of course, we've got a workforce to upskill of 680,000 people. That's not an easy feat. And um, we look to seek expertise in both national and international level to see what other places did and what other countries did. And we also look to champion the role of nurse leaders within the digital health community. Next slide, please. So one of the first things that I did and I thought was really important from a well led point of view was to set up a CNIO network of existing CNIOs and digital leaders across our region. And that has proved really, really successful and worked really well. Um, we look to provide presence at a regional and national level so that we can feedback what's happening from a local level to a regional level right up to national level and share best practice. Looking at nursing engagement across the regional nursing workforce. Lots of things that are happening all require digital and sharing best practice. Now the Shared Decision Making Council for the North East and Yorkshire um, and I have to put a shout out here to Jane Patrickson, who's in the top left hand corner of that picture, um, who has run this. And this is to allow us to ask nurses on the front line, what do they want? How would they deal with problems and how do we get the what good looks like framework right onto the ward? It's great us speaking about it in the region and taking it forward, but we want to get that down to nurse level on the ward and what's important to them. The next aim for that I had to do was to look at what good looks like baselining. Where were we all at? And we're still working on that. Some trusts are ahead of that, but other trusts are not yet. And we're currently looking at an app to try and help and speed up that process. 
but most importantly, we're looking for support and guidance. We wanted to share best practice and we do that. We share things that people have already done, have already experienced and taken forward. Next slide, please. And out of that, this is such some of the stuff that is happening currently in northeastern Yorkshire where nurses are involved in all of the processes in relation to these projects that are ongoing. And we've been really lucky that we have such a strong CNIO network across the region. But some of our trusts are not rec are, are not um, represented yet, so we have to get some more work and try and get more work in relation to the CNIO network and the Shared Decision Making Council. Next slide, please. So from my learning, what went well and looking at from taking time to reflect and look back, increasing the profile, so falling into the what good looks like and well led is making sure people know that you're available, that you're there, that you're, that leadership is important and that CNIOs and nurses have a say in what's going on. I was given the advice by Natasha Phyllis very early on to elbow my way in and I did. And I have to say in every word that I elbowed my way in, I, I was pushing at an open door. People were very welcoming and very keen to have a nursing view and weren't aware of a CNIO role. Working very closely with the regional nursing team and looking at what their requirements are going to be in the future, but also to up educate them on what's coming and what the digital strategy is going to look like. Working very closely with the ICB leads, having a buddy on the national team really, really went well. Getting involved in go lives. I was recently at, in County Durham and Darlington who done a fantastic EPR go live and I was just there to support helping the CNIO, Lisa, um, who'd done an amazing job and very hard work, which you're going to hear about from our Manchester team shortly, um, but just be able to, to give some advice and support. Working very closely with the other regional leads about what we're doing and how we can share best practice across the regions. Looking at clinical input and spending some time hands on and being able to go out and visit other organisations and see what they're doing differently and try and share that. Looking at national regional groups, building key relationships and sharing and helping, but very importantly to look at a multi-professional approach. Nursing digital strategy is really important, but we don't do this on our own and we don't look after patients on our own. We absolutely have to do this with the other professions that are involved. Things that we need more work on. I think we need to get better at comms and how we share our information. There's lots of stuff change and flux in the NHS at the moment. And of course, our local trusts and the whole system is currently under a lot of pressure with more patients requiring urgent care than we've ever seen before and a resurgence in flu and COVID. We have to take all that into consideration and start to think about how can we start to ease that, looking at how we manage patients on waiting lists and keeping them well, but keeping in contact with them so that we can get them ready and optimised for surgery or any, any intervention that they need. Of course, side swiping is one of the big things that we don't have any control over. It's one of those things that just comes straight at you from the side that you didn't know was coming and you just have to plan in. But from a well-led point of view, my biggest issue and problem was time. I think there could be a lot more of me about um, and there could be a lot more people in and around our region to get help. And I think that's one of the things that we're looking at from a national point of view to help support more trust as we go forward. Next slide, please. So what's next? And again, I will go back to well-led is incredibly important, strong leadership, nursing voice and how we take things forward. But there's lots of domains that are working the work good looks like and they all work together. Education strategy and from a personal, a real personal drive for myself is research. How do we bring more digital nurses into the research element of uh, our, our nursing strategy to take us forward? Because that's how we're going to learn. Next slide, please. And I'm going to leave you with this final quote. Nurses are critically positioned to drive digital enabled care transformation, informed by evidence and insights. Nurses with digital health skills are better able to influence digital health decisions from ward to board and change their organisation's culture for a safer, more effective, efficient and sustainable future. I'd like to say that I wrote that, but I didn't. It was Natasha Phillips. 
Um, but it's something that I have constantly on my wall in my office. Next slide, please. And that's me. Questions. My God, and I think we've just got the one question that's come through, but if people do have any questions, please do drop them into the Q&A box. And what we'll do as we go through is we'll make sure that we get them answered either online or offline afterwards. So Gordon, your question is um, around reducing documentation burden. Um, and David Pickles has said, will the standard for nursing documentation be published soon? So yes, the, the plan is within the next quarter, not this quarter, but next quarter, that is still the plan and it will give some basic outlines. Um, there's been a lot of work been done in that and it is something that's very close to my heart because as nurses, we're terrible. We document everything, absolutely everything. And we need to get much more clever about why we're documenting things. Um, and as you move towards an EPR, one of the things that we're looking at, for example, in Newcastle is data that's never accessed again. And this is work that's been done within Canada, Australia and in the US, where we can actually go back and say we're recording this data and provide the evidence to show that no one has ever looked at this. So why are we recording it and starting to pull that information out and cleansing the data that we're collecting? In and around care plans as well, a lot of information that we need to do and looking at how we're developing care plans, how we're recording in care plans, but we must keep to the drive. We should only document once and should only enter data once. That's where we want to get to. Thank you. If we hand over back to Andrea now, and as I said, all the questions coming through, we will make sure we get to either online or offline afterwards. Lovely, brilliant, brilliant. Th thank you, Gordon. That was a fantastic uh, presentation. Really, really insightful um, from your experience, actually, as a, a CNIO. Um, just to add uh, another comment around, obviously, improving the the, the standards uh, for nursing. We, we have got that featuring in uh, the Improving Care webinar session, which is going to be held on the 11th of April. So that's something to, to look forward to. OK, right then. Well, without uh, again, without further ado, after Gordon, I did say we would be handing over to, 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 to Cheryl and Jackie, who are going to give their experience of their of their go live. So uh, Cheryl, um, it's with great pleasure. I hand over to you. Many thanks. Thanks, Andrea. So first of all, thanks everybody for getting along here today and how pressured everybody is at the moment, wherever you're working. It's really challenged to take a bit of time out to do something like this, isn't it? But so very important. So my name is Cheryl Lenny. I'm the Group Chief Nurse at MFT and you'll be meeting my colleague Jackie in a second, who's our Group Chief Nurse and Informatics Officer. Um, we probably just to give a little bit of context. Um, we sort of set up our journey um, quite a few years ago, it took a long time to get the ink on the paper and agree that we were going to spend um, uh, an awful lot of money. If I tell you it was over £100 million pounds, and it's probably, if we were to do it today, it'd be more, it'd be more than it is now because it's been a few years in the making. And I also want to just say in terms of setting the contacts and say, unlike Gordon, digital has never excited me and I've never been overly interested in it. And when it first kicked off, I remember thinking to my deputy, just let me know when you get to the right bit that, I'm, that I can come in on because all this preparation, you know, leaves me cold. But actually I am a convert and I'll, and I'll touch on that at the very end of the presentation. Next slide, please. That's just me and Jackie, in case you don't know what we look like. Next slide, please. Now, this slide isn't a bragging slide, so please don't read it as one. Um, what it's meant to say is not that we think we're fabulous, but it's to give you a little bit of a look at about scale, scale, size, scale and complexity. So we have 10 hospitals and community services. We have the whole of the city of Manchester and we have also Trafford. Um, for those of you who know, it's the birthplace of the NHS. So we have um, a significant number of hospitals, including a standalone dental hospital, two community hospitals, and a number of tertiary uh, specialist hospitals, including children at the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital and uh, Manchester Royal Eye Hospital. Um, so it gives you an idea of the number of complex services that we were trying to bring together. And there was a view that we should do this in phases, and we decided that to do that 
probably wouldn't work having done all the pre-work for it. But at the same time as we went live with um, our, what uh, we've called Hive, I'll touch on that in a minute, but is Epic is the engine that powers this. Um, we decided that we actually would also go live with electronic prescribing. So we've done both at the same time. I can't pretend it was easy, but actually even looking back on it, we believe it was the right thing to do and the timing worked well. But it didn't work well on its own. The amount of um, uh, preparation going into this from the teams across the group has been absolutely significant. So that's just to give you an idea of the size and complexity. Next slide, please. So I'm going to hand over to Jackie now, who's, as I said, the CNIO, who's going to talk about what Hive is and then also a bit about, and I've seen some questions in the, in the uh, Q&A, around the structure, how we've managed ourselves and how we've, what our own reflex, reflections are throughout the programme. And I think um, we'll probably have quite a lot to say. The slides will keep it high level, but we've got um, quite a lot of experience to share with you. We'll try and keep it concise so there's time to have a conversation at the end. Jackie, over to you. Lovely, thanks Cheryl and hello to everybody. Um, so as Cheryl said, um, we are a big organisation. Um, it was a big bang go live and we needed to ensure that we were prepared and ready um, for this go live. Um, why Hive? So Hive, as Cheryl said, is the is the MFT solution that utilises Epic as its unified digital system. Um, there's over, we replaced over 750 electronic systems, some paper based, and it was very much a hybrid approach with very little standardi standardisation across the organisation. Um, what we did big bang overnight is give a unified digital platform. So we were allowed then to look at the patient record from a longitudinal care perspective across all sites. So wherever that patient touched overnight post go live, we could look at that patient record. Um, that ultimately gives us better patient care, safer patient care and a unified system for documentation. Next slide, please. So the opportunities for MMAP, I think everybody on this call knows that digitising the NHS, certainly for MMAP, is a big ask. Um, it's a, it's a, a strange field for lots of people. It's a, it's a field that lots of nurses are disinterested in or don't think it's their business. I think when you do a big bang go live like this, it gives a real opportunity to give insight into every nurse at every level. And at MFT, we, we did a really good job of that. I think we took over 18 months engaging all ward nurses um, from top, bottom, down, middle, all nurses into what they thought they wanted the, the system to look like, what would make it work for you. So you can see some of the stats there, 1500 SMEs across the organisation to utilise and deliver a system that would satisfy 10,000 NMAP users. I think the other thing is we gave research an opportunity, so we were key to, to ensure we included every corner of NMAP, including research, to make sure that the system they were building and designing and adapting for, for MFT worked for them. We did, as Cheryl said, Big Bang Go Live for meds. So we did the closed loop BCMA, Big Bang Go Live overnight. I was terrified, thought it was a huge ask, but actually we did it. It went live. It gave us a, a, a view of the organisation across all 10 sites of who was utilising BCMA overnight. So, and, and we know the main thing, the main safety element of BCMA is PPID. And we could see that off fingertips. Every nurse everywhere can see who is positively patiently, patient identified identifying their patients. So that gave us a real insight into what the system did, how we could see it and how we could give opportunity to improve. We Gordon talked about uh, care planning and the approach to link with SNOMED coding. And I think we would all agree that we need to look further into that and get a better grasp of what we need to do in a digital system, regardless of provider for care planning. Next slide, please. The team. The team, everybody will know, is the most important thing. The luxury of having a digital NMAP team, I, I cannot explain how beneficial that is. The team is um, nursing, midwifery, allied health professionals. They are accredited EPIC builders. They are clinical safety trained. They are masters of the system. They are a team that can engage um, 
get the naysayers on board, demonstrate support, give them real time demonstration of how to use the system. Um, and, I, and I think we would all agree at MFT, the benefits they have given have been second to none. Um, they can lead the system design. And for us post go live, what they can do is for the quick wins, they can do the build for us. We can get it tested and we can get it out. So it's nurses building in a system for nurses, including midwives and allied health professionals. So lots, we know that NMAP want quick wins in a system post go live. We have no issue with that at all. We need governance around it. We've got to have strict governance and make sure it's the right build and it's tested, but we can get it done overnight. And we've seen real evidence of that in our four month post go live. I'll just shake the light because the light's gone off. There we are. Next slide, please. So the digital and map team were from go live from the get go and be and before. So they were involved in the 18 months of planning with the rapid decision groups. They were involved in the build. The gap, I suppose, was the sites. So there were 10 sites and they didn't have a specific digital person. So late in the day, late in the programme, pre go live, there was lots of discussion about the need for a senior nurse at each service and site. So in January, before we went live in September, we recruited a matron for every site and service that the benefit was realised instantly because these were not builders, but they, was, they, they were transformation matrons. They were the front face to, organ, to the sites and the services to say, what do you need? How can we help? Or actually, this isn't working for us. And at Go Live, they independently led um, education sessions and user device um, sessions to make sure they had the right device for the right system that they were using. So they give local resolution and they closely worked with digital and map teams. So together it was utopia because the matrons would be at the front face speaking to digital and map who could then develop the build and make sure they improved on the system that we had and that we went live with. Next slide, please. The next few slides talk about leadership and governance, and I won't go into huge detail around these slides because you'll have these to look at. I think the overarching message is the governance changes. So the governance from the start of the planning of the go live to the pre go live to the post go live is an ever evolving process and you learn along the way because what you needed at pre you definitely don't you may not need or you may need a different flavor at post so i think the next three slides just give you some real structure around what our governance looked like we had really really strict governance and i think that really helps because that aligns you guides you and steers you on how to get a good safe effective go live i think the lack of governance gives opportunity for risk and i think we did that really Really well. I think you'll see in the next three slides there was always heavy professional, clinical, operational engagement at all levels because it, it should be a combined approach. So we can skip through these next slides and you can have a look at them in, at your leisure. The next one is what next? So we know that post go live, four months go live, we may not look like we looked pre go live and post go live and moving into the future. I think it gives us a real opportunity to be creative. We've learned lots. We know what we what we need now and we have some idea of what our team should look like moving forward. And I think that doesn't always mean just nurses, midwives and allied health professionals. What we know is education and training is key in a go live and beyond. So we need to look at how we incorporate digital clinical facilitators into our new structure. I think we would all agree that um, Data at your fingertips is great. You need to know how to utilise that data, how it needs to look in the form of dashboards. And sometimes nurses aren't, aren't the right people to do that. So a nurse analyst who can get that data, utilise it and put it in a meaningful way in the form of a dashboard is really, really helpful. Nurses like a one screen view on how to look at their data, look at their compliance and then improve on, on their data. I think we're going to look more at aligning rather than sites we're going to look at service alignment and that means looking at more integrated pathways along all of our sites we know that gives better patient outcomes and we know that if we work horizontally we'll get a better um, 
patient journey from admission to, dis to discharge and beyond. I think it's important to note that a lot of this is digitally enabled, but we know that it's a cultural change and the change is the really hard bit. So we need to work with the teams to digitally support them and to accept the change and try and work in a different way. And I think that's always the bigger challenge than the digital system. Next slide, please. What good looks like, which is what this presentation is all about. I, I think it's fair to say we, we've done that well. I think we've done it to the best of our ability. And I think you can see here we're green in most of the domains. The domains that we're not green in, I predict we will be, or it at least gives us the data and the information to become green. And I think that's what a unified system does for you across all of these sites. So I think whilst we're working towards an all green status, we need to acknowledge that we can't do it alone. We need our ICS on board with us. And it ha absolutely has to be a combined collaborative effort to get our what good looks like um, to a green status. Next slide, please. And I've got some real a good opportunity opportunity to be a bit indulgent and look at some of my reflections. Um, it's not my first go live. I've done a few go lives with different providers. Um, I would absolutely say that collaboration with the chief nurse is essential um, for safe, effective go lives. There is no doubt about that, being shoulder to shoulder with the chief nurse. And whilst Cheryl says she doesn't like digital. I think she is converted and she might not like it, but she absolutely was standing side by side um, with me and area going, we need to do this, we need to do that. Can you help me? And the support is, it means you're not alone in your voice. And I think sometimes being a, a, a CNIO with a, with a single voice is a very hard ask. So to have a chief nurse along with the directors of nursing alongside you, that is utopia. Having a team. So having a team should not be utopia. It should not be a nice to have. It should be a must have. You cannot do this single handedly, regardless of the size of your organisation. You cannot be a single point of failure. So for me, the luxury of a team has been beneficial. Collaboration with our medical colleagues, our HCCIOs is essential. Whatever affects them affects us and we should be working in, in connectivity, making sure that we are aligned and we are clinical informatics, not me doing my bit and them doing their bit. I think comms is very, very important and I think we need to get much better at comms. I think while we digitise the NHS, what we don't do is comms very well. So we did a great, great um, attempt at comms but I think nonetheless, lots of emails is not the way. So we tried to be very, very creative with our comms to ensure that the band five nurse on night was receiving some of the messages in very different ways, whether it be social media, posters, word of mouth, seven minute briefings. We tried very hard to be very creative with our comms. I think the other thing is to um, take control of the agenda for us, own our own business. And I think we're really good at that MFT, actually. I think we do own our own business, at, hence the NMAP builders, because what we, we know what we need and we can do that. We've got some good governance around it, but we definitely know what we need. Don't do it yourself, engage all. It's not just a CNIO and nursing job, it's everybody's business. Make sure digital is everybody's business and manage expectations. No system is perfect. The system is only as good as the people that use it. And it's our job to engage them to use it and get the best out of the system. The minute we start realising the benefits and we start releasing time to care and reducing the documentation burden, you have them on board. They're on board then because they know they get a better shift. They know they get better care they know they get more time. So I think manage your expectations and don't put everything on the system because actually without us leading it, the system won't be what it needs to be. We've got to get the people on board and that's the much bigger issue. Next slide, please. And I'll hand over to Cheryl. So I'm going to try and be fast on this. Apologies for the speed, I'll do it. But um. I guess what I would say is I'll try and answer some questions at the same time. First of all, is that not everybody will love you for this. Um, not everybody wants to do it, and certainly not every nurse, midwife and AHP wants to do it. But actually, they do come on board eventually. We're only four or five months in, don't forget, and we've still, we're still running at a pace that I think we will continue because our staff actually are engaged and they have been involved. 
We had very early engagement of nurses midwife AHPs pre go live and also in the clinical decision making groups. In terms of subject matter experts, we have loads of those from the clinical specialisms, and then we've had to develop SMEs through the digital uh, professions because, as all of you will know, is this is a relatively new arm of the profession and therefore we are continually developing these people in-house. What we've got, as Gordon said earlier, is really experienced nurses, midwives and HPs who want to do this and that is the fundamental requirement followed by how then do we actually till them up. We did a lit digital literacy review before we ran forward with the training. The big thing on training I would say to you, if we were to do this again, we would provide it all in-house and we would use our own staff. And the business case brought in external people who weren't all clinical and the difference in that was absolutely massive. But I would equally say, even on a big scale, is that if you um, if you engage, if you if manage expectations, because if people think they're going to be fully trained after a two, three hour session, then it's just they're living in cuckoo land. So what they need to do is understand that this just gives them the basis and that where they'll learn it is on the shop floor. And on the shop floor, that's where we work really hard with our super users, our digital teams, our nursing teams, our medical teams, the high um, go live team to help. And that we're continuing. So a lot of learning there that I probably haven't got time to go into. Senior clinical engagement. Jackie came to us in January last year, so she's got experience of doing rollout. At MFT, we're a bit controlling. Uh, nursing is, uh, I would like to say, has got a very strong voice. But what, what, what I, by last January, it became obvious to me that I needed to be really heavily involved in this because this was about clinical practice, it was about professional practice, and actually it was a significant change management issue for all of our MMAPs, and therefore there was no way that I couldn't be leading this with Jackie. I think the other thing is um, is to be good partners with all your other cl clinical professionals, um, and that's just so important. The other thing is change management isn't just significant for the staff, but go live is the beginning, not the end. Um, so from going live, we've learned so much in a few months and I just can't see how we will stop learning because there's so much change going on. But equally, where we've got, we've seen, now we, somebody in the chat says something about um, a PhD studies, which I will have just only but the massive respect for anyone doing a PhD. Um, but actual fact, I think we need to do more studies because our um, experience in terms of our experiential uh, experience sort of thing is um, that um, where it was managed, where it's been managed well, and we've got loads of people who are very digitally enabled and literate, they are seeing some benefits in terms of time. Where people are finding it more difficult and slower to pick up the change, they're finding it much harder. And therefore, those areas we find that probably aren't in the initial phase, at least, releasing time to care. Somebody talks about the BCMA. Uh, did we manage to sustain it? No, we improved it. So we kicked off at the beginning at some ridiculous numbers. Overnight, we suddenly had data. It was unbelievable. So you go from nothing the day before to actually knowing everything within 24 hours. Um, and we have moved that on from some ridiculous numbers like, I don't know, 20, 30% of PPID um, up to in some areas 95 to 100%, in some areas still struggling with some of that. Or it's not that they're struggling, they're just that in the system they're able to work around it. And those are the interesting challenges as we go forward. This isn't about tick, tick box medicine or tick box nursing or midwifery or AHP work. And really important that while workflows are good for us, we don't enable some daft non thinking. And I say that practically, for example, we actually spent so much time telling staff what they had to do. So medicines management. So we'd say this is why you need to uh, administer a medicine. This is how you check it, et cetera, et cetera. What we didn't say to them was you've got to carry on doing what you're doing before in terms of your checks. This is just your digital documentation. So people got to the point where if we hadn't told them that's what they got to do because it was in the new digital system, they stopped doing some of the things they, they were doing before. And it's just reminding people all the time that it's not AI, it's not a, a robot nurse that's coming on toward. This is about enabling practice, it's not about replacing practice. And also, so why am I a convert? Well, because it lines up nicely for me, leadership, practice, research, education, 
audit and the whole of professional development. And what it says to me at any one time, I know what's going on right across our organisation in terms of nursing practice. And it enables me to understand where there are key pressures. Some people think it can be a bit brotherish, big brotherish. And Jackie and I spend quite a bit of time saying, no, that's not the case. You know, this is about learning. Nothing It's not about us finding out who's doing uh, something wrong. So the other thing that when you just a tip for go live, lots of people will be dead interested in you and they'll say, oh, we can give you a hand. We'll look after you. That doesn't happen or rarely happens. So actually, you do have to prepare yourselves and you have to prepare yourselves ready to go like this. So you rely on yourself and then when you get help from anybody else, that's a plus. Don't rely on anybody else to help you do this because it's really particularly if you're going live relatively soon because you are still some pioneers. If you think about it, there's a huge number yet so you can contemplate what their digital journey looks like. And I'm just leaving with saying we are still learning, but actually some of it is a joy, even though you're finding things that might not be right. It is a joy to be able to understand things for my role, certainly to understand where I need to support our, uh, my, um, say my our nurses, midwives, AHPs to get this right, because this is all about patient benefit. And just absolutely finally, we have an app on it called My MFT on Epic, and we've got, uh, I can't remember what the last number was, about 80,000 people signed up to it. And that is a phenomenal um, uh, app. It will, we've only rolled it out to maternity fully. Everybody else can just get appointments and know where they're coming and going. But ultimately, that will be a very interactive app that patients will have regarding their health and management. And really, finishing on that has got to be the right way to go. When you think about what Gordon's mentioned about the pressures across the system, helping people to manage their own health has got to be the future. So happy to take any questions. Next slide, I've put our contact details on if anybody wants to come. Uh, contact Jackie and myself if you're desperate. Thank you. Hi, so we've got lots of questions coming through on this one. So I've had a quick scan through and the most popular question is how have you assessed and supported digital literacy through the workforce? So Jackie, do you want to take that or do you want yeah, I'll take that. So yeah. we did. Um, so we did a full digital literacy assessment and we got extra staffing um, to support that at um, hospital site and service level. Um, so not only did we offer the assessment, we had people going in saying, have you done it? Do you need some help? Can I sit with you and help you? I think that's the really important thing. I think to put the assessment out is the easy bit to get people to complete it is the much harder bit. And then to do find out what you're going to do with the data when you get it. So we did a lot of that work. We did have extra support internally to do that. And I think then what we need to do moving forward, and I'm part of the regional group looking at digital literacy and how we improve that, is make sure that it's included from recruitment. Do you know what you're coming to? Are you equipped to do the skills that you need with the digital system? So I think it's looking beyond go live, but for the go live period, we did have and recruit staff to do that. It's not just the assessment, it's so much more than that because you've got to help them to do it and then help them if they're not efficient in it. Thank you. And then lots coming in around training as well. So how did you manage training for all staff for the Big Bang? And what training have you given the SMEs and digital nurses? So training was a headache, a huge headache for us. I think for the size of us, you can imagine um, across the summer months, actually, um, and with um, our provider and the system that it uses for training was complicated to say the least. So I think what we did was we, we did train everybody. We got to about 90%. So we did train the majority of people. We had super users. We had peer trainers who did extra training in order to fill those gaps and bridge those gaps when we went live. We did face-to-face -face predominantly. Um, we didn't do e-learning and we did role-based training as well. We are now just looking at our future state and we probably will do things a bit differently now we're live. I always say the go live is the hardest bit because you've got to get everybody trained at one single point and that's so hard to do. I think moving forward you have the luxury of dribs and drabs. I know you have cohorts of junior doctors and cohorts of nurses but nothing like a go live. So we did manage to do it but I think we've got lots of lessons learned around that and how we do it differently. My my big ask when I came in was to ask Cheryl's support for nurses to train nurses. We know that's utopia. I got that. 
So we did put nurses into the digital system, not all of them, but we did put a huge chunk of nurses into the digital IT training, upskill them and they delivered the training. The feedback was significant. This is so much better. But I think to agree with Cheryl, it's functionality of the system. It's never going to teach you how to do your job. It's how to navigate safely and you learn from go live alongside your peers. Thank you. Um, so next question, I think we've got time for a couple more. How large is your NMAHP team and were the digital NMAHP team internal staff or external? So I inherited the team. Um, Richard Cox, who is my lead nurse, uh, takes all the credit for this. So yes, there's a mix of NMAP, which is absolutely essential. So we've got um, a physiotherapist, we've got a dietitian, uh, we've got midwives and we've got nurses, including community nurses. So we are a range, a vast range of a team um, who give that holistic view to the NMAP scale and future of what digital nursing looks like. So we've got um, seven in our team and we've got a digital matron for every site, including community. Um, so we i am absolutely blessed and i acknowledge that all day long without them we wouldn't have had the safe effective go live that we've had so just to add to that so uh, we're in the middle the one thing i would love a bit of a tip really if you're uh, still looking to uh, purchase your digital system etc and you look you're involved you need to be involved in the business case because you need to make sure there are some things that weren't in our business case digital matrons one of them that we really wished we had to, got in there earlier so this bit about not being there too, um, too soon you almost can't be there too soon so you need to make sure if you've got an opportunity now whilst they're developing that case that you're involved in it from the start and that you've got an option and then get your chief nurse and say look all the experience says we need to make sure this is put in with the money because once the money gets tight because it's a lot of money and we've got no money in the nhs at the moment or in foreseeable uh, next year or so people will look to cut corners so we've got a plan that we're putting forward to our informatics uh, board to say this is what we see the future as in terms of digital and the way we're, we're developing it is we're saying you wouldn't do infection control on one nurse in an organization our size would you have one infection control nurse no well you wouldn't have one digital nurse would you then so that's it's that kind of thinking where no this is a subspecialty on its own it works right across the group how on earth do you going to manage that well you need an infrastructure and you're never going to get future cios unless we start to put infrastructure in where we can develop people and develop their digital skills. But it's not about them just being good in digital. It's about can they con can they contribute to actually clinical practice and changing variation in of stopping variation in clinical practice and making sure we can actually use the big thing that excites me is the research agenda. How do we use this fantastic data across the country, not just at MFT, to actually look at how do we change our practice? Is it right what we're doing at the moment? How do we inform research and the evidence base? How do we make sure the colleague who's just done a PhD has got more information to deal with as we move forward? And we've got so much opportunity on this agenda to do this, but we've got to do it together. And Jackie reports through to the um, uh, clinic, um, chief informatics officer, but she also reports to me. And I, one of the things I've put on the slide, don't allow nursing to become siloed in IT. That is a big no, no. Make sure it's completely connected to the profession, because if you do that, you will lose sight of it and the CNIO will end up feeling lost and um, siloed themselves and not get things done. We've got amazing doctors who've done a massive leadership programme on all of this. Can't you know rate them highly enough. But actually, as you all know, We've got something called a peacock group. It's not an actual bird and it's about professional practice and we just develop. We could take all our issues through to that. And sometimes what colleagues come up with is what they think is a good idea. We're waving the back going, No, no, that's not going to work. No, nurses are not going to do that. And it's not that you're being difficult. What you're saying is that won't work. And we've had really strong nursing leadership going into the system and saying, if we're going to be truly digital, then we've got to stop doing all these workarounds. Because to be fair to our medical colleagues, the biggest change in practice is for the doctors. Absolute massive change for them. So we've got to work alongside them and be supportive as well. Thank you. That's answered quite a few of the other questions in there. So if I just ask one final question then, and that is, that is, 
How do you keep momentum going? I think passionate leadership. I think you can see that we are both very passionate about our profession and leading the the, the digital agenda. I think you know you, you wouldn't be in it if you if you didn't have the interest and the passion to do it. And I always say, because it's hard, it's hard to keep the momentum and switch the mindset from analog to digital. And sometimes, and that's where if you're a single point of contact as a CNIO, it can be like the Jackie Cooper mantra. It's not the Jackie Cooper mantra, it's the national mantra. We've now got a national framework to work to, so we are all working towards that. So I think you've got to believe in what you're doing. It's like you, it's your full nursing profession. Believe in what you're doing, be passionate, and actually want to make it different for an improved, it's these lights, want to make it improved for patients and staff isn't that what we're in it for we're in it you know no matter what form of nursing you're in you're there to improve the care for your patients and for your staff actually because the documentation burden on our staff today is unacceptable um, with the pressures that we've got so um, and we need to let patients own their own data we know that population health improves when you give them their own data and and my fears of going big bang go live with a patient portal have absolutely gone because you can see within the four months of go live the sign up from patients patients want to own their own data and improve their health so as long as we stay passionate and we stay motivated we rally the troops along then and we make it better and if they realize the benefit Fits, you've got them then so the minute you get it you make it better for them they're on board with you i'll just add to that though as well I, um, nicole um there isn't a choice here it's not about how do we sustain it this is the future this is how we will manage our documentation and the patient record going forward you know you don't you know if you want it online you buy it online you buy it, you don't even have to wait till lunchtime do you you can do it in between something walking down the corridor this is the future. So it's not about man sustaining it. This is about actually getting to a point where nobody knows any different. Over the next few years, we'll have people like me who've been around forever who will know what happened in the past, but fairly soon they won't do. And one of my IT nurses said to me, oh, some of our nurses are thinking of going to another trust because this is so hard. And I said, well, that's fine. And they can go if that's what they want to do. I said, but all I can tell you is they'll be coming to that trust very soon. So wherever you go, you will be doing digital at some point. So if I was you, I'd just kind of get stuck into this and, you know, move with us because you'll get there. You will get there. So I think there is something about um, not looking back. I, I think that's the future. It's not about sustaining it. This will be about the way we manage care in the future. So I don't see that as an issue at all, except with people who maybe will still be the people who think, God, I hate this. Um, but, you know, we'll get there, you know, because nobody manages their life. I can't even switch my heating on at home without going on my phone and managing it. So people are just going to get to a point where they don't remember the past. So um, let's look forward to that. Brilliant. Thank you. And all the questions that have been put through into the Q&A, we will respond offline and we'll make sure that we answer them all and we'll put them onto the links after. Brilliant. Right. So it's back to me, isn't it? Wow. What what a session. I can't, you know, I, you know, it's been lovely to see how many clappy hands have been going up, how many hearts have been going up, how many thumbs up. It's been absolutely lovely. Um, but I do agree with you, Ch uh, Cheryl. It is about this whole digital nursing transformation it's about it is about embracing isn't it the the future this is this is it um and it's really important to 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 get to get with it and and it's exciting it's a really exciting agenda so I just wanted to say a huge thanks to to our speakers. Um, obviously, we've got some contact details there for if people want to um, uh, get in contact to what uh, pick up anything that's been said today. But I want to say a huge thanks to all of you on the call because honestly, it's been absolutely amazing to have so many uh, on the call for this first uh, webinar on on well led. I hope you found it valuable um and and have taken away some really good nuggets for the for the future uh, or to inform you know whatever you're doing in your own areas of, of practice um and I, I think for me there's just a couple of things i want to pull out of the sessions actually i think gordon it was absolutely brilliant uh, gordon's uh, session to looking at you know natasha phillips vision uh, and for, for him as a regional cno and obviously the cnos below him being able to to execute that agenda um, and really 
harnessing the understanding around around all of that and what the what we want to what the national ambition is really and what Natasha's ambition is and how key the CNIO role is um, you know it's really a, obviously a very important leadership role and goes back to my initial point of it really sets the tone uh, and the strategy uh, uh, as we go on and, and the you did mention actually Gordon about the the power of the shared decision making councils um, and we will be again uh, sharing uh, that on our fourth webinar, which is about supporting uh, the, the, the supporting the nurse success measure, which is on the 9th of March. So that's a look forward for people who want to pick up on that. But I think the big thing you came out with is the power of, of the of the nursing voice around this and uh, and, uh, you know, CNIOs play a very key role. And then Sharon and Jackie, wow, wow, wait, you did you did so much in that in those 20 minutes. And <laughs> your big bang rollout on electronic patient record but there's some fantastic nuggets there for for people to take away i mean golly i made i made copious notes myself and just recently at my trust we've we've rolled out a um, cerner actually as our electronic patient record back in may so i was a lot of what you were saying i was resonating with um uh, so just to pick out some of your pieces i think the digital team is absolutely crucial and getting that right uh, getting your team right up front um before you start to do the preparation piece is really really important and they definitely set the 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 scene uh, and and uh, the way that the, the training clearly uh, and how people well, it's changing mindsets, isn't it? How people the mindset's going to change around this. I think Cheryl, your point about training, I think is really really important. We had external trainers came come in to to do our and it it didn't go well either. So there is a bit about looking at that for the for the future. I think you know people are, are embarking on this, um, and it all starts with that business case. You're absolutely right, which is the first sort of step, isn't it, in this this journey, um, and making sure from a nursing perspective you've got it absolutely spot on. And there's lots of examples that can be shared with people now uh, around that uh, to to ensure that they. They they get it right, and I'll I'll admit as well, Terrell, that um, before going on this journey and before getting involved in the what good looks like, um, I didn't confess to being you know an absolute expert in digital transformation. Far from it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> a bit just like you but oh my goodness since obviously going on this journey and getting involved with it it's opened my eyes completely so i am a i'm a convert too from one chief nurse to another absolute convert <laughs> around this and and the point you make of you know your relationship with jackie is absolutely key and, and that came out really strong in this presentation between particularly really that the, the well-led aspect of that is really loud and strong and I'm just you know reflecting with my CNIO that we're like that you know we're absolutely and it is so so important isn't it that you know it's got that collective voice um in the top with leading the way on this so um so huge thanks uh, absolutely fantastic and hopefully I'm everyone's enjoyed it and it set the the webinar and um, what good looks like series off on a on a good footing i think it has um again a huge thanks to 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 our speakers today i hope you've all in, all enjoyed it and just to reiterate if we didn't manage to get to your question we will answer it uh, offline and we do actually have a short evaluation um and we'd really appreciate if you could um if you could complete that uh, for us but the the look forward for you all is the is the next session, which is going to be focusing on smart foundations um, uh, from the guidance, and that's set to take place on the first of, of February, which again is one o'clock to quarter past uh, two, and that's going to be chaired by Dan Berry, who's a behavioural uh, insight expert, um, and and the links to that will be posted obviously uh, in the in the chat. So huge thanks to everybody. Thank you so much again and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Hopefully you enjoyed your time out for your very busy schedule. So we're very appreciative for you coming on today. Thank you.